Alright guys, welcome to yet another mod installation tutorial. This one is very long overdue. This is indeed for Stalker Soup, and uh, you know, I never did one before because the mod was changing so often with new patches, the, the installation order was sort of changing, I just didn't think it was the right time, but now that this uh, big new patch has come out, or a big new patch, you might not know about this, uh, things have changed, and I feel it's time to actually release an installation tutorial. So let's get started here. First thing you want to do is obviously go to technobacon.com. All the links for everything here will be in the description. And uh, go to downloads on the sidebar here. First thing we're going to do is just download all of the patches. Now depending on when you're watching this, these might be different. They might be later versions. I can't imagine they'd be previous versions if you're watching this in the future unless you're watching this in the past, but I don't think that's the case. So just download the mpatch10992 part 1, and then part 2, and then the micro patch here, 109921. So download all three of those. This for me took about 10 minutes. They're quite big actually. It was about, I'd say, probably close to a gig in total. Don't really remember, but just download all three of those. And then head on over to the modders repository here. It's right underneath. The link is right here. And this will take you to Technobacon SkyDrive. And this is where you're actually going to download the main mod. So the first place you want to go is the sort of fifth folder down here. It's called Stalker Soup 109920 database or DB. Just click on it. And uh, all you want to download here is simply the file that says stalkersoup109920.7zip.001. You want to download that one and all of the rest of the files up until the uh, .010 file. So these are all the main ones. I'm just going to tick this one and tick this one. So you want to download all of the files in between these two. So uh, pretty much 1 through 10. All the rest of this stuff, the bare game data, the uh, stalker soup game data unpack, and the readme, you don't need these. You just need these 10 files here. So next we're going to go back uh, a page once you have those downloaded. And I, I might want to say this could take a while, and I had to do these in... I might as well go back in here. I had to do these in sets of 5 or 6 because I guess the servers just couldn't handle the amount of... Uh, bandwidth that would require to actually download all of them at once. This is about six and a half gigs worth of uh, files here, so it might take a while. You have to sign in up here to your Windows Live uh, account to download these, but everyone should probably have one of those. Not sure. If you don't, you can make one for free. Anyways, when I go back to the main sky drive here, and the last file we're going to have to download is the Stalker Soup bin beta. Just go in here and download the beta ss bin folder, and that's pretty much it for downloads. Alright, so once you have everything downloaded, I would highly recommend you sort of organize your files in a way that makes sense to you. I obviously can't recommend anything specific, I simply do this the way that sort of makes sense to my brain, the, the sort of folder structure that I like to use. But all I, I can recommend is just not keeping everything in your main downloads folder. If you're trying to work out of a, a messy downloads folder and installing a bunch of little folders and that, it just it doesn't tend to work. So I would suggest if you have an external drive or even just on your C drive, just somewhere, even in your My Documents, just make a folder for this mod and keep everything organized. So I put all of the files I just downloaded into compressed files here, all of the zip files we just got. And this is everything you should have. The beta SS bin folder, the three patches right down here, and the files 001 through 010, obviously. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually unpack the main mod. And the way this works is you simply right-click on the first one, the uh, .001 file. Go to 7-zip or WinRAR if that's what you use. Go Extract Files. And then simply press OK here. I already have everything extracted, so I'm not going to do this. It should take about 10 minutes to extract. But uh, that's all you need to do. You don't actually need to, to unzip each one of these files individually. It's actually a split archive. So uh, when you tell it to unzip the first one, it actually unzips everything as one big sort of uh, zip file. So that's how those work. And then obviously just unzip uh, the rest of these, the beta SS bin folder and the three patches, just using 7-zip or WinRAR again. 
Okay, so by this time you should have everything unzipped. Now I took the liberty to put everything in a separate folder. Once again, you don't have to do any of this, but I just find it easier to organize everything when I put everything in, you know, separate organized folders. So we've got the beta ss bin folder, the stalker soup folder that I made here to put all of the uh, main mod files into, and then the three patches. Now, let me explain something quickly here. When we open up the folder containing the main mod with all of the uh, .db files, uh, this is a different sort of structure than most mods. Um, usually when you'll download a mod, it comes in a simple game data folder that you put in your stalker directory. And all that does is it overrides any game files that are, you know, from the vanilla game. But the way Technobacon's done it here, by packing them inside the database files is it's simply overwriting all of the vanilla game files. So you can see over here in the uh, the actual vanilla game that I have installed, we're going to replace all of these game data.db files here with the ones from the mod. Now obviously I've already transferred everything, but uh, your your plain vanilla game directory should look very similar to this. So simply select all of the uh, the .db files and then just copy them and paste them over. And then obviously when the your OS asks you if you want to copy and replace, you tick the box at the bottom and just go copy and replace all and just merge everything together. Okay, so once you've copied over all of your .db files, which you know might take a while, so be patient, you want to go back and open up the beta ss bin folder and then obviously open up the subfolder here until you get to app data bin and FOV stalker soup. Now before you copy any of this, you want to actually go to your stalker shadow of Chernobyl directory and then just copy and paste your bin folder here. Now you can rename it something uh, bin backup. For now bin copy is fine. That's what the uh, that's what Windows will automatically assign it. Uh, so that's fine. You just want to make a backup in case something happens. You know, you want to keep as many sort of vanilla files as you can. So once you got that backed up, simply select all of the files, the app data bin and FOV stalker soup that were downloaded, copy them, control C, obviously, or just right click copy, and then paste them into your directory. Now here we're going to go merge folders, so just tick the box, do this for all current items, yes, and that's it. Okay, so we're almost finished here. At the moment, we do have a fully functional mod. You could just launch your stalker game to make sure it works, but uh, I'm going to make sure I install the patches first. So you'll notice here we don't actually have a game data folder yet. That's because obviously our uh, mod is running through these game data.db files, like I mentioned before. Uh, so what you want to do is open up the first patch. This is going to be the one that says part one at the end and then the subfolder and copy the game data over. So paste it in here. Just wait for it to transfer. This might take a while. They're pretty big patches. Okay, so got the first patch copied over. Go back to part two here, 10992 part two. Open up the subfolder, game data, copy it, merge the folders. And then finally we want to do the same thing with the micro patch. That's going to be the 109921. Just copy the game data, paste it over exactly the same procedure. Now this time we're going to have to overwrite some files here. Just tick the box at the bottom, do this for the next 20 conflicts, and then copy and replace. That's all. Okay, so we're almost finished here. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to change the FOV if you so desire. Uh, all you have to do is open up the fov underscore stalker soup file that you should have copied over in your uh, Shadow of Chernobyl directory. And then it'll open up a little sort of command prompt window here. Now this is similar to the Call of Pripyat fov switcher. It'll show you in numbers here what the uh, different fov values are. So one is going to be 67.5 which is the, uh, the default fov for Shadow of Chernobyl. And then 2 is 75, 3 is 83, 4 is 85, and uh, 5 is 90. So uh, 83 is what I'm going to be using from now on. It's what's uh, recommended by Technobacon. So obviously to change it, just you know type in 3 and then enter, and it'll copy over all the necessary files. That's it.
you're ready to start the game up. Alright, so here we are in the main menu. You'll notice uh, things look quite a bit different from the original menu design. And uh, just to make sure you've installed everything correctly, you want to look down right in the bottom left hand corner and make sure it says 10006. If it says 1005 or 10005, then uh, you installed it wrong. You, you probably didn't copy over the bin folder. Anyway, just make sure. Uh, options wise, there is one thing I recommend you tweak here. Uh, this was recommended. It's just that you set your gamma simply one bar ahead of the contrast and brightness. So uh, it just makes everything a bit more defined, helps a little bit. Uh, just choose whatever options you want. The default resolution tends to be quite low, so you're probably going to have to crank that up to your native resolution. And then let's, uh, let's start the game. I'm just going to go enter the zone to see how long this takes. I hope Fraps doesn't make the game crash because it tends to do that. Let's see. Well, the game did indeed crash, but that is not uh, the mod's fault. That's simply uh, the Fraps recording software I use conflicts with the mod, or the game actually. Whenever it's loading, it just crashes the game. But uh, in general, loading times are extremely quick. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you that really here. But uh, on a sort of cold start, it usually takes me about 30 seconds to get into the game from the main menu. And then loading a quick save is lightning fast, almost as fast as, uh, you know, the vanilla game. It's really impressive. So that's it for now, guys. Uh, hopefully you can get this mod up and running with this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.